A look into the presidential landscape. Utah Senator Mitt Romney now says that former President Donald Trump is by far the most likely GOP nominee in 2024. This is former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley has announced her bid for the Republican nomination this week. Full reaction to all of it, let's bring in GOP strategist Chris Alenzo along with The Hill media columnist Joe Concha. Great to see you both. Chris, let me start with you. I did not expect to see Mitt Romney talking about Donald Trump's chances in 2024 in that favorable of a way. What do you think about Romney's words? Do you agree with him? I think Mitt Romney is putting aside his personal beef with uh, the former president because he recognizes that it, 2024 is going to be a crowded space. When it comes to the Republicans, it's going to be a deep bench. We know that it's going to be much like the former election cycle in 2016. And it's a stark contrast to the Democrats who really have no one to put forward at this point besides Joe Biden, who we all know it, the Democrats don't want him. 54 percent of Democrats are now saying they do not want him to run for re-election in the next mm. election cycle. And uh, the Republicans have a great team at this at this moment. So let's we'll talk about the bench, Joe. Trump claims he's glad mm -hmm. that Haley is jumping into the race and says the more the <laughs> merrier, which I totally get. I think he's right. I think a bigger field plays to the former president's advantage. Joe, how do you read it? Well, when you look at polls, they're very interesting, Brian, because when the matchup is Trump versus DeSantis, DeSantis wins a majority of those head-to-head -head matchups. The minute you inject in a Nikki Haley or a Mike Pompeo, a Mike Pence, uh, a Tim Scott, then it becomes fractured to your point, and the anti-Trump vote, so to speak, within the Republican Party gets split up while Trump then stays still in his lane where he could end up getting the nomination just by having 35 percent support because everybody else is splitting up that vote. So the trick for the GOP here is if they want to beat Trump uh, is once you're a candidate and it's, it's very clear that you're not going to get to the nomination, that you don't hang around very long and you and you all uh, get behind one candidate to take on Trump. That's what the Democrats did in 2020. Mm. Buttigieg to Amy Klobuchar got out of the way and that gave Joe Biden a clear lane. That's what the GOP would have to do if they wanted to defeat Donald Trump, get behind one candidate like a DeSantis where it becomes a one-on-one -on -one match and then it's, it's, it's a 50-50 toss-up. Well, we shall see how that plays out. It'll be interesting for sure. I want to I talk about CNN's Don Lemon. He was noticeably absent from his morning show today, just a day after saying Nikki Haley is past her prime. Watch his comments again, then listen to Haley's response. She says people, you know, politicians or something are not in their prime. Nikki Haley isn't in her prime. Sorry. When a woman is considered to be in her prime in her 20s and 30s and maybe 40s. What are you that's talking about? That's not according to me. Prime for what? Uh, it depends. I mean, it's just like prime. If you look it up, it'll. If you look, if you Google when is a woman in her prime, it'll say twenties, thirties, and forties. I have always made the liberals' heads explode. They can't stand the fact that a minority conservative female would not be on the Democratic side. I wasn't sitting there saying sexist, middle-aged CNN anchors need to have mental competency tests. Although he may have just proven that point. Krisha, we hear the words cringeworthy all the time. That Don Lemon clip is certainly a textbook definition of cringeworthy. What's your reaction to this whole Lemon Haley thing? How does it play out? So I've now seen this clip upwards of 10 times, and it still makes my blood boil as a woman, or for anyone for that matter. Um, it is egregious. Don Lemon's comments are so misogynistic and sexist and ageist for that matter. And if it were a Republican or a conservative pundit who had said the exact same thing, they wouldn't have a job at right. this moment. But because it's Don Lemon, and what's worse is his apology, his inis initial tweet, which you're now showing, he doesn't even cite Nikki Haley, right. which is just so awful. He doesn't take any accountability, and uh, I don't think much is yeah. going to happen to Don Lemon until, uh, you know, it's really his time to go at this well, point. Joe, really quickly, that's my question to you. What yeah. happens to Don Lemon? What do you think? Well, for now, he's in South Beach enjoying a four-day <laughs> weekend, so he got the day off, and he actually apologized 
over the phone to staffers, couldn't even stay there and do it face to face. So that's very interesting. So what happens to them? Well, you've been in this business long enough, Brian, as have I. The numbers are horrible for the CNN mm. morning show. Uh, they're only getting worse. The chemistry between the hosts is not good. And at some point, you got to make changes. And the first person to go, probably Don Lemon, I say just put him on New Year's. And then you know, that's the only time he actually brings in ratings. And then the rest of the time, maybe replace him. But uh, I don't think he survives there too much longer, Brian. You know, you know he can just hang out in South Beach. That sounds like a pretty Thanks nice place to be. All right, guys, we got to go. Chris Alenzo, Joe Concha, great to see you both. Thanks for being with us.